to the already established protocol, but specifically to Bishop Michael Leon Mitchell, thank you for this awesome opportunity to preach God's word on this Good Friday. Will you please go with me into prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord God, I come before you to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord God, to preach your word one more time. I ask that you totally remove me, Lord God, and that you allow your Holy Spirit to have his way this day. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. If you would, please turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 34. And the words read like this. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And guess what, my brothers and sisters, they sure enough didn't know what they were doing when they nailed Jesus to the cross. And God wants to ask us the question today, are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to forgive? Now, we have Jesus here on the cross, but I'd like for us to go back a little bit because I believe that when Jesus said, forgive them, he was not just talking about the chief priests and the scribes. He was talking about everybody that had a hand in him being there on that cross. He's talking about everybody that didn't believe in him, believe who he said he was. He's talking about everyone that had denied him, everyone that has set him up for the fall. So it was not just the chief priests and the scribes. And so if we follow the story from a, a bit back and we go back to where Jesus was with the disciples at the Passover and everyone is sitting around a table and fellowshipping and Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's letting them know that they need to be prepared because he's about to leave and they have to be ready for when he departs. They have to be ready to pick up where he left off. And in the midst of him talking to his disciples, all of a sudden, Jesus says, behold, one of you among me will betray me. Can you imagine a shock and the surprise on his disciples' faces? Because some of them were, were like, look, uh, who is going to betray Jesus? Because I know it's not me. So he can't be talking about me. But then we have Judas who probably, in my theological mind, he was probably sitting there like, how in the world did he know that I was going to set him up for a fall? But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, when you're divinely connected to God, God talks to you all the time and he lets you know. If you pray and you seek God and you're constantly in his presence, he will let you know when someone is trying to set you up for a fall. He will let you know when someone is trying to come after you. The question is, are you listening? Because God is always speaking. Uh, he's speaking to us. I mean, sometimes there's times where he get, just get quiet because we don't know how to shut up ourselves. <laughs> We don't know how to shove ourselves, but here we are. We have Judas, who is about to betray Jesus. Judas, who is his, one of his disciples. I mean, these are the disciples that Jesus said, come follow me, come follow me. And then when they followed him, he taught them, he preached to them, he trained them, he sent them out to do some work. I mean, these are the people that he really really cares about. This is his inner circle. I mean, he has an inner inner circle, if you know what I mean. But he has his disciples around him. And these disciples are supposed to be the ones that's supposed to be looking out for him, that's supposed to care for him, that's supposed to be on his side, his team. And here it is, Judas is going to work with the doggone scribe and the chief priest to take Jesus out. Now hear, now hear me, hear me out. Now I'm here to say that Judas was not always working to plot against Jesus and to take Jesus out. Uh, if you read the word like I read, it said, and then Satan entered him. And then Satan entered him. And Jesus told him, go on and do what you're gonna do. I know you're gonna do it, go on and do it. And so he says, Father, 
forgive him for he knew not what he was doing. And Judas showed sure up, didn't know. And as Jesus is continuing to talk to his disciples, I mean, here it is. He's telling them, look, you got to be ready because I'm out of here. I'm gone. And here is Peter saying, no, I'm, <laughs> what you talking about, Jesus? I am going to go with you. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. I am not going to be left behind. I'm going to go with you. I'm your ace boom coon. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I'm here with you to the end, Jesus. And Jesus says to Peter, Peter, I'm here to tell you, I'm just here to tell you that you're going to deny me three times, three times when the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. And Peter is just adamant, no, Jesus, you ain't talking about me. Nope, 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 no. Nope. But let's fast forward. When he gets to the Mount of Olives and he begins to pray, Jesus is praying earnestly and he's praying to the father. The word doesn't tell us exactly what he's saying, but he's praying earnestly. And he makes one come. He says, father, let this cup pass from me. But then it's like he comes to himself and he says, but let that, my will be thy will. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus was willing to do what he needed to do. He was willing to do what God had told him to do. Even in spite of the suffering, he knew that was coming. Even though he knew that the betrayal was coming, he still was ready to do what God had told him to do. And when he was praying, he asked the other disciples that were right there, look, can you just stay, stay awake and stay and watch and pray so that you won't be tempted? And yet here it goes, when he comes back, they sleeping. Isn't that just like us? We just sleep and miss the whole opportunity to pray. We got to pray so that we can be ready for the enemy. We got to stay alert so that we can be ready for the attack. We got to be prepared for when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And here comes Judas with that doggone chief priest and scribes, and he kisses Jesus on the cheek. Kiss of death. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then here it is, when they march Jesus up Calvary, I mean, when they march him up there, Peter is behind them. And here it is, people are saying, you know, aren't you one of the disciples? Peter said, nope, not me. Mm -mm. Denying Jesus. Another one came up, aren't you one of his disciples? I know you, nope, 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 not me. Another denial. And then finally, one person come up to him and say, no, I know you are one of the disciples. And Peter says, nope, not me. And the cock crowed, my brothers and sisters. And the word says that Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And Peter looked at Jesus. And he was filled with so much remorse because he remembered what Jesus said, that he would deny him three times before the cock crowed. And can you imagine the hurt and the pain in Peter's heart? Can you imagine the, the hurt and the pain in Jesus' heart, knowing that Peter just denied him three times, but yet when he gets to the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I'm here to tell you that, yes, when he is brought before Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate is like, look, I don't find no fault with him. Who can find some fault with a man that's trying to do good? We're talking about a man that healed the sick. We're talking about a man that healed blind folks. We're talking about a man that healed limbs that, that was deformed on people. We're talking about a man that gave sight to the blind. We're talking about a man who fed the multitude, but yet here it is, they are setting him up to be killed. Why? Pontius Pilate was like, oh no, let me send you to Herod. And then Herod thinking, oh, he's going to get a miracle performed or whatever. And when Jesus don't conform to what he thinks he needs to get, he sends him back to Pontius Pilate. That, that, that passing the buck. Don't we know uh, uh, people are good with passing the buck? But it lands on Pontius Pilate and he still tries to wash his hands from it. He's, he's like, look, let me crucify this criminal, this person that has murdered people, this person that has done some horrible things. Let me murder him, put him on a cross. But let Jesus go. And all he hears from the chief priests and scribes and the people is no, crucify Jesus, crucify Jesus. We want Jesus to be crucified and they let a murderer go. But yet the person that did good 
is being marched to Calvary's cross to be hung. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's bad enough that they marched him up to Calvary's cross. It's bad enough that they nailed him on his hands. It's bad enough that they nailed him at his feet, but they hung him between two criminals like he was a common criminal himself. But I'm here to tell you that even in the midst of everything that was going on, they had no clue that they were setting Jesus up. They were setting Jesus up for a platform between the multitudes. He was setting Jesus up so that Jesus can show God's love, so Jesus can show God's mercy, so Jesus can show God's grace, and ultimately so Jesus can show God's forgiveness. They had no idea. Are you willing to forgive? They had no idea when they hung Jesus on the cross that they were setting Jesus up. <coughs> they were setting Jesus up for a comeback. They had no idea. But here Jesus is saying on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The first words out of Jesus' mouth was not, Father, I'm in agony, I'm in pain. Help me, heal me, get me out of this. It was not. The first words of Jesus was not, Father, I want you to kill him. I want you to destroy him. He would, he would have been justified. But guess what? He didn't say it, Lord. He didn't say it. The first words out of his mouth was not, Lord God, I just hope that all these people go to hell and burn. That was not his words. The first words out of his mouth was full of grace. The first words out of his mouth was full of humility. The first words out of his mouth was full of mercy. The first words out of his mouth was full of God's forgiving grace. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They had no idea that when they were hanging them on a cross, that the same Messiah that the Jews was looking for was right there before them hanging on a cross. They had no idea that the person that they were hanging on a cross was the son of God. They had no idea that the man that was hanging on a cross was God's only begotten son. They had no idea that the man that was hanging on the cross was their sacrificial lamb, the sacrificial lamb that was offered up so that God's word can come forth and be true because God can't be a God that lies. And if he said that he needed a sacrifice in the Old Testament, he needed a sacrifice in the New Testament. And I'm here to tell you that I'm glad that Jesus decided to be our sacrifice. I'm glad that Jesus was set up to be our sacrifice. I'm glad that he was the one that was chosen to do what he did because I can tell you that I can do it. I can tell you that you can do it because we do not have a, a clean slate. We don't have anything. We have spots and we have blemishes, but thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus that, that his blood washes us and make us whole. But guess what? Before that transformation happened, we would not have been able to be the sacrifice. So I'm here to tell you, that they had no idea that they were setting Jesus up. They had no idea that they were setting him up for a comeback. They had no idea that the sacrificial lamb that will save the world was hanging before them. They had no idea that the Lord of Lords was before them. They had no idea that the King of Kings was before them. They had no idea that they was putting on the cross Jesus Christ who would die. And not only did he die, but when he died, he conquered death and hell. They had no idea. But I'm here to tell you that when he died and he conquered death and hell, he rose with all power in his hand. They had no idea that they were setting Jesus up for a comeback. Are you ready for your comeback? Are you willing to forgive? In order to forgive, you got to be able to be connected to God because it's a hard thing to forgive if you're not connected to God. But when you're connected to God, it is easier to forgive. And when you forgive, you don't realize that it's setting you up to go higher and higher to the higher calling that God is calling you to. The enemy doesn't know 
that when he comes to attack you, the enemy doesn't know that when he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, the enemy doesn't know that everything that he tries to do to you for your bad, that God turns it around for your good, and God uses it as your footstool to take you higher in the calling that he has for your life. Don't you let the enemy make you believe that you can't forgive. Don't let the enemy make you think that forgiveness don't have nothing to do with it, but it does have a lot to do with it. Because how can you go where God is telling you to go? How can you be everything that God is telling you to be? How can you do everything that God is telling you to do when you're harboring hurt, when you're harboring pain, when you're harboring anger, when you're harboring the idea that you just want to take somebody out? Are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to be like Jesus? Are you willing to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They had no clue. They had no clue. But he conquered death and hell. He ascended up into heaven with all power in his hand and he released the Holy Spirit. And my brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, because he released the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives inside of each and every last one of us, we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We are conquerors. We are blessed coming in and we are blessed going out. We are justified. We are sanctified. We are children of the most high God. And I don't know about you, but I am going to do like Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God's word for God's people. The enemy did not know what he was doing. The enemy thought he won by killing Jesus, but they did not know that they was just setting him up for a mighty, mighty comeback like a phoenix from the ashes, just rise and spread your wings and fly to the higher heights that God is calling you to. Don't allow unforgiveness to hold you bound. Don't allow unforgiveness to harden your heart. Don't allow the enemy to win. Do as Jesus did on the cross and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God's word for God's people. Amen.